Hi folks, this is part three of week two RX 2010. The last topic we're going to talk about is strengths based on percents. And basically what we're looking at is solutions. Different types of solutions contain different types of stuff. Um, a solution always has two parts. One is the stuff or the drug um, that is dissolved in something. So we call that stuff solvent or solute and we stuff we dissolve it in is solvent. So solute is the stuff, solvent is what we put it in. Okay, so we've got three basic types. We've got the type where we put a solid in a liquid and that's called weight volume. We have this type where we have a solid and a solid, and that's called weight weight. And we have volume volume, which is a liquid and a liquid. I like to think of some of these as um, different things in the kitchen. For example, weight volume is kind of like dissolving sugar in tea. Um, weight weight is kind of like mixing up two solids, kind of like mixing butter and shortening together. Um, volume volume is like putting a liquid in a liquid. So maybe you're adding um, a little bit of uh, Hershey syrup to your chocolate milk or to your white milk to make it chocolate milk. That's an example of volume volume. So keep that in mind, um, especially when we start looking at problems, because it's really important to remember that when we add a solid to a solid or a liquid to a liquid, we're actually increasing the total amount that we have. Whereas typically with a solid going into a liquid, it dissolves and it doesn't change the total amount. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Um, the other thing you want to think about is the actual definition of a percent. A percent means per hundred, so it's always going to be per hundred something. So a hundred milliliters, a hundred grams, whichever, whether you're dealing with a solid or a liquid. So milliliters for liquid liquid uh, grams for solid. So it's always out of 100 and it's either milliliters or grams. And that top number of that percent tells us how much. So for example, if we see something that is 0.9 percent, that means we have 0.9 grams, in this case, of sodium chloride in 100 milliliters of solution. So it's always per 100, and that top number is always represented by the percent. So if we had something that was 50%, that would mean 50 out of 100. If it was 10%, um, it would be 10 out of 100. If it was 9%, um, it would be 9 out of 100. In this case, it was 0.9%, so it's 0.9 out of 100. But Anytime you see that percent, it means per hundred. So keep that in mind. And also keep in mind that that now tells us a whole fraction, a ratio that we can use in a problem so that we can solve them. Okay, so using that information to solve some proportions. Here's an example. We want to know how many grams of zinc oxide are contained in 60 grams of zinc oxide paste that's a 40 percent paste. Now remember anytime you see that percent you know right away that you have a ratio. So start with that. Write that percent as a ratio. We wrote it as 40 grams of zinc oxide because that's the active ingredient over a total of 100 grams of paste. 40 over 100 because it's 40 percent. So 40 grams of drug in every 100 grams of paste. And our question wants to know how many grams of drug is there going to be in 60 grams of paste? So I had to make sure I put my pieces top and bottom in the right position. So make sure you're reading carefully. Make sure you label everything because that will make sure you get things in the right spot. Then you're ready to do your cross multiplication. So 100 times n is 100 n. 40 times 60 is going to go on the other side of that teeter-totter. 100 n is going to equal 2400. And then remember we divide both sides by whatever is with that letter 
So in this case, we're dividing both sides by 100. So when we take that 2400 and we divide it by 100, we get 24 grams of zinc oxide. Next problem. How many grams of meconazole powder are in 45 grams of a 1% cream? Again, write that percent right away. 1% means 1 over 100. We want to know how much is in 45. Setting it up with those labels puts everything in the right place right away. We're ready to cross multiply. 100 times n is 100 n. 1 times 45 is 45. Divide both sides by 100. Make sure you put that in your calculator. When you do the 45 divided by 100, everything will come up properly in your calculator. And that's how you get the 0 0.45. Remember, at any point, if you get confused on these, write out that work and give me a call. OK, here's another one. This one says we are going to add 6 grams of salicylic acid to 56 grams of an ointment base. And we want to know what's the final concentration. Well, concentration means what's the percent. So to find the percent, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to put the active ingredient over the total. So active over total times 100. So in this case, the active ingredient is that salicylic acid. So the active ingredient is 6. So we have 6 grams of salicylic acid. And what did we do with it? We added it to 56 grams of base. So if we added it to, that means we now have a total of 62 grams. So our total is 62. And then we're going to multiply by 100. So again, make sure you're putting this in your calculator. 6 over 62. So 6 divided by 62. And then times 100. And I'm just going to round to the nearest tenth. So this is going to be 9.7%. So 9.7% is the strength or concentration of this mixture. Active ingredient over total times 100. OK, here's our next one. We want to know how much clotrimazole is contained in 50 milliliters of clotrimazole 1% solution. We got a percent, write it as a ratio right away. 1% means 1 over 100. 1 gram of active ingredient over 100 mils of solution. We want to know how much is in 15 mils of solution. Setting up that ratio and that proportion right away will help you get everything in the right position. 1 times 15, 100 times n is our cross multiplication. We're dividing both sides by 100. And when we divide 15 by 100, we get 0 0.15. So my final answer on this one is 0 0.15 grams of that active ingredient, clotrimazole. Here's another one asking for the concentration. So remember concentration, active ingredient over total times 100. Something to notice here, though, is that my active ingredient and my solvent that I'm adding it to are different units of measure. They must be the same units of measure. It's always best to change ounces to milliliters if you're dealing with milliliters at any point in the problem. Since 1 ounce is 30 milliliters, 4 ounces is going to be 120. So my 120 ounces of active ingredient is 100, or my, one, my 4 ounces of active ingredient is 120 milliliters. So that's my active ingredient, 120. And remember, we in this case, we have to look for those key words. This one says is added to. So we're taking that 120 and we're adding it to the 500. So that means we have a total of 620. And then we're going to take that and multiply by 100 to get our final percent. Popping that into the calculator, 120 
divided by 620, hit your equals button, times 100, is going to give you 19.4 on this one. So 19.4%. Okay, last thing that we're going to talk about is a formula for dilutions. Dilutions means we're going to take something of a certain concentration, a certain strength, and we're going to make it weaker by adding something to it. Usually it's water or petrolatum. So if it's a, a liquid, we're going to add water. If it's a solid, we're going to add petrolatum. Now your book has one formula, and I'm showing you a different one. It's really not a different formula. It's just presented in a different manner. And I find a lot of folks find this a little bit easier to use. The way this one works is you take the concentration that you're starting with and the quantity that you're starting with, and you're going to multiply them together on one side. And that's going to equal the final concentration and the final quantity on the other side. So beginning concentration, beginning quantity equals final concentration, final quantity. So let's see how that works. How much chlor chlorpromazine, 100 milligrams per mil, should you dilute to prepare 240 mils of chlorpromazine, 30 milligrams? Okay, remember we want to start with what strength are we using and what are we going to end up with? Okay, so concentration one is what are we starting with? Concentration two is what are we ending up with? We want to end up with this one. And how much of that do we want to end up with? We want to end up with 240 mils. Both of those go on the final side, so 30 times 240. The beginning, 100, goes on the left side. So there's my 100. And I do times N because I don't know what that missing piece is. You can call it whatever letter you want, but I just prefer N. So 100 times N is going to equal 30 times 240. 30 times 240 is 7,200. And now I'm just going to divide both sides by 100, just like I do any other time. To get rid of that number, I have to divide by whatever's with the letter. So dividing both sides by 100. 7,200 divided by 100 is going to give me 72 milliliters. So that means I'm going to start off with 72 mils of clopromazine. Here's an example. We are diluting 500 mils of a 70% to 2,000 mils. And we want to know what's the new strength. So what are we going to make? So that's the piece we're looking for. So we're starting off with a 70% and we're starting off with 500 mils of that. And we want to know how much strength are we going to have of, a, of 2,000 mils of solution. So 2,000 times N. So 70 times 500 is going to be 35,000. And that's going to equal 2,000 N. Divide both sides by that 2,000. So when you take 35,000 and divide it by 2,000, let's see, 35, 1, 2, 3, divided by 2, 1, 2, 3, we're going to get 17.5 percent. So that's how we use the dilution formula. A little bit different than what your book shows, but I think some of you might find it a bit easier. Again, if you have any problems or questions with this week's material, please give me a call at any time. My number is 618-979-4520. Thanks a lot and have a great week.